If you're interested in citizenship by investment, chances are you've heard about the five Caribbean countries that offer such programs. Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, Grenada, St. Lucia, and Dominica. But what's really the difference between these five countries and their citizenship by investment programs? What's life like on the ground here? What kinds of qualified investments are available? And what kind of people are running these programs? We'd all like to know more about the distinguishing features of each of these islands. But let's face it, who wants to spend two weeks in the Caribbean just to find out, right? Well, lucky for you, there's nothing I won't do for my subscribers. So we came here to find out. Let's go. What is citizenship by investment? Before we start, let's make sure everyone understands what a citizenship by investment program is. Here's a simplified explanation of how it works. Say you'd like to get a citizenship from a country that allows you visa-free travel to more than 120 countries, including the Schengen area in Europe. You find a service provider you're happy with, pay a professional fee, and provide them with your documentation, including things like birth certificates, police records, bank statements, and proof of address. The service provider then helps you prepare an application and submits it to the authorities in the country that has the Citizenship by Investment Program, CIP for short. Your application is then reviewed by what's usually called the Citizenship by Investment Unit, or CIU, which conducts due diligence on you. These background checks include looking you up in international crime databases, running your name by international intelligence agencies and government bodies, and so on. Usually, the CIU will enlist the help of a third-party due diligence company specializing in background checks to verify the information you have provided. This process typically takes between two and five months. If the CIU doesn't find anything of concern during this period, they'll let your service provider know that you've been approved in principle, at which point you'll be invited to make the necessary investment, usually real estate or a cash donation. Once complete, you and any family members you may have included in your application will receive a full citizenship and passport from the country in question. It's a little bit more complicated, but that's the gist of it. There are five countries in the Caribbean that have CIPs. Over the next two weeks, we'll be traveling to all five countries to learn more about each country and their respective programs. The first stop on our journey is St. Kitts and Nevis, home to the original Citizenship by Investment program. St. Kitts and Nevis has a population of just 54,000, making it the smallest CIP country in the world in terms of population. The island's airport has direct connections to international destinations like London, New York, Miami, and Toronto. The St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment program opened as early as in 1984 making it the first formal such program in history. Since then, the country has issued more than 10,000 passports to economic citizens. What's the draw? How about visa-free access to 141 countries, including Schengen, the UK, Russia, India, Hong Kong, and Singapore? To qualify for the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Program, you can either invest $200,000 US dollars in real estate or donate $150,000 to the government's Sustainable Growth Fund. Our first port of call in St. Kitts is the capital Basse-Terre and its adjacent cruise harbor. Wait, wait, what's the cost? What's the Only cost? 10 for you. 10. 10 what? 10 you US. See? 10 US. Wait, nah. hey, wait, buddy. Hold it. No, no, no. Met some new friends. Well, what are their names? Snoop Dogg, Donald Trump, and Bob Marley. Which one is, uh, oh, this is Snoop Dogg, that's, right? No, that's Snoop Dogg, that's Bob Marley, that's Donald Trump. All right. Donald Trump is going to make America great again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. 10. It's pretty steep, huh? No, that's a price. I think he charged us by the millisecond. I'm obviously not the first tourist he's run into. And that shouldn't come as a surprise, considering 569 cruise ships stopped by here last year, spilling a total of 1.1 million passengers onto the streets of Bastère. As well as, of course, a handful of cruise ship workers, some hailing from far-flung places. 
，因为这里。但是你你你是在哪里遇到这些中国人？是哦，不是在。是跟 tour 的时候，我同事、嗯，然后就是去热带雨林上面玩的时候，嗯、然后上面有很多别墅啊，对啊，然后上面的宣传单上面呀、啊就是，因为这里的空气很好。我在中国的时候，真的感觉地球要灭了。后来来了这里之后，才发现天空真的很蓝，<笑>好像还还挺好的，还不会灭，还有几年没错，不错。那你觉得在这里投资值得吧？挺值得的，因为如果房产也不是很贵。对对，他们说说房价不是很贵，所以很多中国人在这里，嗯，开。而且上面有一家很大的超市，就是热带雨林的半山腰上面有一家中很大的中国超市，是中国人开的。嗯，因基本上他们都说，每次去其实去到一个加勒比的港口，他们都说，呃，要找中国餐馆，首先不是因为吃，是因为那里的 WiFi 很快，因为只有中国餐馆的 WiFi 特别快，是我们中国人可有钱了。<笑> Anything Caribbean? Yeah, this is Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. Anything Eastern Caribbean. <laughs> Part of the reason why we're over here to begin with is to try to get a taste of the true spirit of the Caribbean. And I figure what better way to do that than to taste the spirit of the Caribbean, which is rum. And rum has been distilled in this part of the world for centuries. So, cheers. Not bad. After a quick drink, strictly for location research purposes, of course, we're determined to see something more authentically Kittitian. That's the demonym for St. Kitts and Nevis. And we decide to make our way to a more ordinary part of town. All right, finally the real St. Kitts. Enough of the duty-free stores. We stop by a bakery to sample some local pastries. Coconut rolls, cupcakes, bread pudding, sweet potato pudding, sausage patties, buns, coconut tart, cinnamon bun, Swiss roll, macaroons, guava tart, cookies, raisin rolls, and some cake we have here. Yeah, okay, you know what? I'll have one of those coconut tarts. Is this a family business? Yes. Yeah, you've been doing this for a while? Yeah, for the new business for a long time. You sign out on you have to sign out there? Yeah. What's it? You come here and see this sign here. Yeah? Look at the bus. Look at the bus. Is it sign? The Fort... Oh, uh, Fulton's. Yeah. We're pleasing you is our business. Yes. Uh, you, some people might misunderstand that. <laughs> you know? They weren't kidding about the pleasing part. It's really good. If you ever go to St. Kitts, Stop by Fulton's Bakery, get yourself a coconut tart. We come across a tree with some interesting looking fruits we've never seen before. Yeah. Ah, it's an aphrodisiac. What does it do with the bread? Well, it, you, he was explaining, it makes you, uh, yeah, breadfruit. So, uh, if you're trying to make a family, yeah. eat a lot of breadfruit. Yeah. All right. So coconut <laughs> Gotcha. Yeah. You got kids? Yeah. How course. many? I have three. Three kids? Yeah. You must eat a lot of breadfruit. You can put your milk in it and butter. Yeah. And squash it up, squash it up, and, and then make a nice meal. Mm. You still go cut it like this. Zoop, 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 zoop. Peel it, mm. cook it, and, and make it a side dish. You got oh. one more Okay, got it. Quadruple. Yeah. Oh, whoa. They ain't going to be ready like that. Oh, so that's how you know when it's ready? Yeah, when they get big. When they get big, huh? It, it's not ready yet. It's not ready uh, yet. So maybe hang it back on the tree? <laughs> 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 it's getting late, and it's time for us to find some shelter for the night. Our shelter, luckily, is of the five-star variety. We've been invited by Range Developments to stay at their recently opened CIP-approved project the Park Hyatt. Investing in one of these units would allow you and your family to qualify for citizenship of St. Kitts and Nevis. On our first evening here, CNN releases a list of the best new hotels in the Caribbean, and the Park Hyatt St. Kitts has ranked top of the list. As the sun rises the next morning, we understand why. Park Hyatt 
sits in the center of Banana Bay at the southern end of St. Kitts and directly opposite St. Kitts' sister island, Nevis. What a lavish display. Wonder if they have breadfruit. We have over 300 uh, staff members employed here, over 250 of which are local nationals here at Park Hyatt St. Kitts. My name is Pankaj Besht and I'm the executive chef of this resort. As far as I know that the culinary is a skill-based job and uh, it was very difficult to find the skill on the island, uh, especially when there is no luxury resort prior to Park Hayat, you know, and, and uh, with a population of 53,000 people, we have uh, almost 43 chefs in the kitchen, and I struggled to find uh, more than 20, you know, but um, we changed our approach. So instead of hiring based on the skill, which we did for the 21st people, we change our approach about hiring people based on their attitude. Uh, we as managers bring the international experience for them to learn and uh, their enthusiasm, their passion gonna take them to different levels of uh, success, not only at, uh, at Park Hess and Kids, but throughout the Caribbean, you know. Uh, they don't need to leave their island now to go gain an international experience. We bring people from uh, across the globe to bring the international experience for them. As much as we'd love to stay behind to enjoy the resort's long list of amenities, we're here to film a documentary, and there's no time for hot stone massage spa treatments. We've scheduled a tour around St. Kitts' 1,156-meter-tall Mount Liamuiga, an old volcano that we're assured has been inactive for at least 1,800 years. Just in case it's not completely dormant, we decide to do the tour on four wheels. The first European to see these islands was Christopher Columbus, who came here in 1493. He gave St. Kitts the name San Jorge and Nevis San Martin, but I guess those names didn't stick. Like a lot of Caribbean island nations, St. Kitts and Nevis has been, at different times in history, British and French, and sometimes both at the same time. In 1625, the British and French settlers split the island between themselves, with the English occupying the middle and the French controlling the ends. The island changed hands several times over the centuries, until it finally won independence from Great Britain in 1983. In 1984, the newly independent country was looking for new sources of revenue following the shuttering of its uneconomical sugarcane industry. The new government encouraged growth in the tourism sector, but also launched the world's first official citizenship by investment program much of the proceeds of which would go to the newly established Sugar Industry Diversification Fund. At its peak, the St. Kitts and Nevis CIP accounted for almost a third of the country's GDP. The next day, we've managed to get a meeting with Les Kahn, head of the St. Kitts and Nevis Citizenship by Investment Unit, the entity that processes applications to the country's CIP. Could you sum up in a sentence or two how you would allay the fears of people who are concerned about the standard of background verification in St. Kitts and Nevis? I will say that uh, St. Kitts and Nevis has the, the, most, um, the most efficient and diligent due diligence and vetting process. I would say that um, the controls that we have ensures that we, um, we only give citizenship to the individuals who deserve and that we um, base our decisions on not only the, the due diligence providers but also on international law enforcement uh, who will also take into consideration things like terrorist activity, terrorist financing, Interpol, um, anti-money laundering, criminal investigations. These are factors that are taken into consideration um, by our international law um, partners. On our way back, our taxi driver reveals that the CIP is a source of pride to conditions. Well, you know, we offer citizenship by investment. Yeah. You know, that was a biggie, and we was the trendsetter in that there. So we are headed out of the island. We started in 1984, just after we became independent in 1983. So the other countries like St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada and Antigua just started in the past five, six years. But we have this like 30 something years ago. When he was first into new juice to the island, you had to purchase a property cost at least 400,000 US to become a citizen of St. Nevis. Yeah. Then, 
Later on, after the government changed, the new government then, they not they lost three years ago, they then introduced a system that you can put $250,000 into a fund and become a citizen. Yeah. And since the recent hurricane now, this new other government now have offered a six months package that is only $100,000. We're very impressed at what we've seen in St. Kitts. Untamed nature, world-class facilities, welcoming locals, and a citizenship by investment program that's really making a positive difference in the lives of ordinary residents. If St. Kitts and Nevis is anything to go by, I think we're going to enjoy the rest of our journey through the Caribbean. That's it for this episode of Caribbean Citizenship by Investment, but we'll see you next week in another exotic destination. To make sure you don't miss out on that, subscribe to this channel here on YouTube or follow us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter. You can also follow our weekly newsletter by signing up on our website, imidaily.com. If you're curious to learn more about citizenship by investment programs, send an email to info at imidaily.com. We'd also like to thank the sponsors who made this series possible. I'm Christian Nesem. See you next time.